everyone, and welcome to the Able Voices podcast. I'm Dr. Rhoda Bernard, founding managing director of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education and assistant chair of music education. And I'm proud to present this podcast featuring disabled artists and arts educators. We are inviting artists with disabilities to be guest hosts for the Able Voices podcast. The guest host for today's episode is Precious Perez. Precious is a classically trained pop, R&B, and Latin vocalist, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist with a double bachelor's degree in music education and vocal performance from Berklee College of Music. She is also a published children's author. Precious is blind. Her goal is to make a difference through doing what she loves and showing the world that blind people are as capable as everyone else. She hopes to inspire future generations to pursue their dreams and be successful in the same way that she has, because she knows that anything is possible and giving up is never an option. Precious aims to be the first blind Latina artist at the forefront of the Latin music industry. She is confident that she can lead, she can achieve, and she can be the one who alters the way that people see. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Able Voices podcast. My name is Precious Perez, blind singer, songwriter, and music educator, and I am the guest host for today. And joining me, I have Shane Lowe. He is a percussionist, an audio engineer, and a founder of a radio network called Venom, among many other things. Welcome, Shane. We're glad to have you here. Thanks so much. I never get bored. This is weird because usually I'm interviewing Precious for stuff. So this is <laughs> this is cool. Better. Let's do this more often. We should. We should. We'll make like that it. happen. So I first kind of want to give everyone a background. So tell us how you got interested in music and what led you to everything that you do today. So I feel like the story of becoming interested in music is like many people's. Like, music is always a part of my household. So I'd get different musical influences from different places. So, you know, with, with my dad, it was a lot of classic rock. My, my mom was really into country music and later got into pop and, and hip hop. Um, I had a lot of friends who were into rap at school. So, I mean, there's all kinds of influences pulled from all kinds of different places. Um, I started when I was four, I got free violin lessons at my preschool. Um, so I started playing violin. I kind of dropped violin um, when I left preschool because violin lessons got a little bit expensive. Um, and then I was like, well, I'm blind, right? So I should play piano. That's what my parents were like. You should play piano because all the other blind guys play piano. So <laughs> you'll really fit in. It's like, okay, I'll play piano. That sounds fun. So I played, I took piano for a year and I was like, well, this isn't really my thing. Like, I'm not really like, uh, not really feeling this. And then I got into guitar for like three years. Um, guitar was fun. Uh, but I was like, guitar is hard. I don't like guitar. It's too hard. Um, but I always like throughout all of this time, I would be really interested and excited when I could just beat stuff and just bang on stuff. I would drum on tables. I would drum on walls. You know, I was I was a, a spazzy kid, so I would just play on anything, everything that I could. So I had been trying to get into drum lessons, drum lessons since like I was eight or something like that. And luckily, my guitar teacher was also a drummer. So I started le learning under him for a little bit. And um, then I got into learning under Mr. Bobby Falk, who's a great jazz drummer. I learned under him for a few years. And then of course I got a shout out uh, Meg Samples, who I studied under for high school. She's a, a killer drummer here in Louisville, Kentucky, where I am from. Um, and then throughout college, I'm working on a lot more percussion based rhythms and, and you know techniques under Professor Brett Ballard at my university. Um, because I realized that I really enjoy drum kit. That's what I started on. I have a huge passion for it. But percussion is like what I feel like I have a natural talent for. So I'm able to, you know, it's easier for me to practice percussion. It's easier for me to improv and really just get lost and play different rhythms and, and different time signatures and just kind of go crazy. So that's kind of my, my short history. That's fantastic. Fun fact, everyone, Shane's played percussion on a few of my released songs. That's so, true. Pretty, great. pretty cool full circle services. moment. Look up yeah. Precious Perez on all streaming services, preciousperezmusica.com. Hey, we already did my promo the last episode. No need for that. No need well, for now that. we're doing it this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> as a musician and a percussionist with a disability, are there any challenges 
that you have faced kind of in within like the industry and the realms and the fields that you're in and also what role does it play in what you do I feel like I've kind of gotten lucky so um typically the way that my disability manifests is um people you know I, I talk to a lot of musicians who are like yeah you know I, I get a lot of I deal with um, a lot of, you know, kind of microaggressions or like a little bit of discrimination, disability. Um, and I've been actually really, really fortunate. Um, people's response to me is usually, oh, you're a blind musician. That means you must be pretty good. You must have something <laughs> right. Like, okay. Stereotypes um, working in our favor this I know, time. Yeah, stereotypes are actually helping us for once. This is legendary. <laughs> so I've, I've been fortunate there. But then at the same time, um, I've had to really learn to improv. I think improv is one of my greatest skills I've ever learned as a musician. Um, and you and you can learn to improv, by the way. Um, it's something that I that I practice um, really regularly because I cannot play the drums or the tambourine or the shaker or the djembe or anything, you know, using my hands. So I can't read braille music at the same time. So I, it's not like I can get some sheet music and say, we're going to play this today, get some sheet music and just play it on the fly. I have to be good at improv and hearing and feeling what the band and the musicians around me are going to do so that I can fit in because I, I learn and play by ear. Um, and that has served me really well. I've, I've managed to, you know, I, I feel like I've been successful with that. Um, and the way that I practice that is that I think it's so important. I'll just, just turn on the radio sometimes, um, and just play to whatever comes on and, you know, change stations and just, just understand musicality and really get into what musicians are playing, you know, in this song. Do you think that it's going to be a loud bridge or is the bridge going to get soft and take the drums away? Uh, is this, is this guitar solo going to have different drum hits than the chorus or is it going to be pretty much the same and at the same, same velocities, same dynamics? And it's, when you hear enough music, when you listen to enough music over a long enough period of time with that kind of mindset, I mean, I've, I was always absorbing music as a kid, um, always drinking it, just like how, you know, guitar tones, vocal styles, lyrics, everything, production. So for me, it's just a natural extension of what I already was obsessed about and just being able to, you know, sit down with you know, with a djembe or some bongos and just playing along to something and say, how can I play this tactfully? How can I take these instruments that are not in this song and make them fit into the song like they were always there? And that's like invaluable to me as a blind musician, just knowing how to improv and knowing how to fit in, even if I've never heard the song before in my life. Absolutely. And it's kind of like a, a thing you learn how to do, like you hone it and you practice it. Yeah. Um, you got to be comfortable it, with it. Absolutely. Because you'll mess it up too. Like yeah. I still mess it up all the time. Everybody but that's makes the thing mistakes. About improv. You just got to roll Montana with it. Right there for Keep you. going. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We're going to hear an excerpt of Shane playing. Um, it's about the first excerpt that we're going to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, this is going to be a, a pretty improvisational thing. So I'm going to play. Um, a piece uh, of a tune called Duende by Andy Timmons. It's one of my favorite tunes to play drums over because it's very open, it's acoustic. Um, the percussion is very minimal, but when I wanna show people what I do and what I can do, this is just a really fun piece where I can go crazy, let loose, just play some insane stuff and have a good time with it. And none of it is, you know, none of it's rehearsed, it's all made up on the spot and just being comfortable with the instrument that you're playing. So on this, I'm playing uh, a very small Latin percussion djembe. So it is uh, a six inch drum head. And then I'm playing at the same time, uh, a pair of six and seven inch bongo drums. So I'm adding in that hand percussion to the song. So this is a piece of Duende by Andy Timmons.
amazing percussion on Thanks, that man. one. Playing two things at once. Man, I try to play ukulele and foot tambourine, and that does not go well for me. So <laughs> that's that's pretty impressive. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Duende by Andy Timmons, as played by Shane Lowe. Thank you. Another excerpt. Can you tell us a little bit more about this one? Yeah, absolutely. So this one is a little bit more rehearsed. Um, this is a tune that, that I've, uh, been a, I've been a big fan of this band. They dropped their debut record last year, a band called The Red Coats with two Ds. And um, this is the, the title track. It's called Red Coat. Um, and it has all these different time signature switches, different style changes. And I'm just layering on some percussion for fun. Um, to, to you know add some different textures to it and uh, it's a lot of fun for me I'm playing I'll play the same instruments actually on this one and different time switches different style switches and uh, a little bit of a little bit of fun with the solo section at the end so this is a tune called red coat You're not on tour with the Redcoats, why? <laughs> I, I, yeah, because I, I don't know. I just I need to harass them more, I guess. Like I need to. Let's manifest it, man. You're I, gonna yeah, be on I tour to, with them one day, right? I need right? to be a better friend to them. I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually. I love. Play, you mentioned a minute ago, like playing instruments simultaneously, and I feel like that's one of the most important things too that a, that a percussionist needs to learn is like that that coordination with all of your limbs and i got lucky because i started on the drum kit so doing that with percussion is a little bit more natural um and soon i, I just so i just started a podcast uh called the talking heads podcast it's a show for drummers um and i, I host it with several very good friends of mine um who are incredible extraordinary drummers in their own right and um soon we're going to do a master class on that kind of multi-percussion because lately i I started realizing that, you know, the, the djembe and the bongos aren't always going to cut it. You know, sometimes I play cajon or sometimes I play a full size djembe and, you know, but, but that doesn't always fit either. Sometimes you need some extra stuff. So I've been working on layering in, you know, maybe a foot tambourine or, or lately I've been playing a lot of, a lot of different egg shakers. Um, so being able to play the djembe, the bongos and an egg shaker at the same time, it's something that's, that's really exciting to me. It's really interesting. It's, it's pushing new boundaries that I've never really practiced before, experimented with before. So um, it's a lot of fun. I'll be doing a master class on that here soon. So um, I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll chat about where you can keep up with it here at the end. So don't leave. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> That's exciting. That's really, really cool. Um, I can't wait to tune in to more of those episodes. Also, thanks. I know that you're a percussion extraordinaire. OK. But there's many Thank other you. things that you have your hand in. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about the projects that you've been working on and anything that, like, what you want to work on in the future, if you have any plans for upcoming projects. Just just let them know. Let them know. Oh, geez. Um, so I my the biggest project I work on is being a dad. Um, that's, that's one of my biggest things that I, <laughs> I put some... You know, I've, I've worked long and hard to get there. Um, I've got a, right now he's five. He's about to be six in one week, um, which is crazy. Um, so we're always, you know, hanging out, doing stuff together. He's also a, a drummer as well. He's he's killing it. And a credited um, songwriter. Can't forget that. That's right. Yeah, he's on Precious's uh, children's EP. So check that out as well. And um, thinking, oh, yeah, so all my other nonsense that I do. Um, so I do some podcast production. Uh, I, I told you already a little bit about Talking Heads. Um, I produce for a podcast called Scene Change, which is for the National Federation of the Blind Performing Arts Division, um, where they highlight different guests each month. 
Um, I do several other podcasts on a streaming platform called Venom, um, which is what Precious mentioned earlier. I'm the founder of Venom. Um, we're you know a, a network of original media. We do all kinds of things: radio, podcasting, uh, showcasing different work, and allowing artists and listeners and broadcasters to connect in unique ways. Um, so that's a lot of fun. I'm going to be starting a full-time role soon as a, an MDA, a management development analyst. Uh, sorry, management development associate uh, at uh, Curriculum Associates coming up soon. So I'm going to be uh, I'm going to have a real job. A real <laughs> job, kid. Um, that's going to be fun. Um, what else do I do? I forget things. Um, Precious, what else do I do? I don't even know. <laughs> Those are the big ones. I mean, aside yeah, from that's just the, that's playing the your heart out the all busiest. the time. You know? The stuff that I want to do, um, I have been doing a lot more live sound lately, um, sound engineering, and I really, really want to be a recording engineer for some live shows that's a big project that i would like to be a part of so i've been kind of honing my skills and my my craft a little bit on that so uh and and gonna try to pitch myself to to some tours in the future about you know being a recording engineer and and maybe facilitating a little bit more of this art that that's been coming out of selling the live concert, selling the recording of the live concert um, after it's completed so that people can experience that magic. That's really important to me. I'm a, a, a live music fanatic. So um, that's something that I'd uh, I really like to step into that industry. It'd be a lot of fun. So that's that's what I'd like to do in the future. I love that. Everybody be on the lookout. This 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 man's going places. <laughs> I'm going to, going to Taco Bell after this. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on there's better restaurants to go to than taco bell hot it's, take yeah. hot take hey they've got the mexican pizza back man i'm i'm, an, I'm excited <laughs> all thanks about to doja this. cat yeah see this is this is how music <laughs> relates to everything because doja cat got the mexican pizza back so bu- musicians can do anything <laughs> that is true that Pull is anything true off, man. before we go what advice do you have for blind percussionists or disabled percussionist musicians trying to get into this field and you know do the things that you are currently doing such as percussion engineering broadcasting all those different things like just overarching advice that you could give to anybody that is looking to get into this field of music i have some 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 categories of advice i have i have a lot of advice um so like generally speaking um what i have done in my career as a musician and as a performer is not, you know, what is common or what is popular. You know, I, um, I do jam sessions all the time with some really good friends of mine. Uh, Precious is, is a part of them. And, you know, it's really easy for people, you know, in the audience to understand the technicality of a vocalist because, you know, it's, it's right there. It's, it's in the lyrics. It's in the emotion. It's in the power. Um, people identify with guitar solos really easily. They, they, they identify with those melodic instruments very easily as well. But in my experience, performing as a solo percussionist sometimes can be, can be difficult to connect with the audience. And so if you're a percussionist um, and you're looking to to connect with people and to to interface, you know, with who you're playing with and, and really and make it interesting. Um, audience participation is always the key. And there's a few you know different ways. Play stuff they know if you can. You know, play stuff that they know. Make it make it interesting. Um, you know, know your audience and and play to what they like. But also, if if you're not playing something that they're already know about and excited about. You got to bring them in. You got to do something to engage people and, and move them into your universe where you're excited about what you're playing. And that's, you know, just just getting them to disconnect from whatever they're doing that isn't connecting with what you're doing. So, you know, making people keep time and clap or stomp their feet or, da- or jam around and dance and, and do all these things. That's really important to, like, drive the engagement so that they remember your set and what you were doing and not like whatever they were reading on Twitter while you were like in the background. Um, And I think that's true, you know, for percussionists, but 
anyone who's playing your own original music, you know, the live presence, I think, is really crucial to, to bringing people in and getting people excited about what you do and, and just connecting and having people connect with your music. You have to almost like force them into it, force them to get involved with it so that they realize, you know, okay, like this is actually really fun. This is something that I identify with. I feel this. Um, you know, we, we, there's so much, you know, with the internet and with people that are around and, you know, just all of the, all of the music in the world, it's really tough to make yours stand out. Um, and so there, there is a lot uh, of different things that you could do to bring the audience in or bring your listeners in and make them feel like they're a part of the music instead of just kind of playing and saying thank you. And, and, you know, that's, that's the end. Um, and study from people you admire. I mean, I admire, I mean, some of the greatest frontmen in the world to me, if you ask me, John Bon Jovi, Ed Sheeran, incredible frontmen, two of the, the all time best for me because of how they bring people in, how they attract people and connect with people. And this every second of that show is riveting for the people who are there. And some of them don't know the music. Um, look up old Ed Sheeran concerts from like 2011, 2012. Some people know the music, but a lot of people don't know it. And the way that he brings them in, that is super important for independent artists and up and coming performers who are just trying to draw people in and connect with them. That's, I mean, that's, that's the biggest piece that I have for, for, you know, connecting with other people for yourself. What I, what I don't connect or when people are not interested or less interested, you know, like, oh man, like Precious has this beautiful song. Precious always blows people away. Precious is incredible. So like, it's easy for people to connect with Precious and be like, that was amazing. That was so good. I really felt that. Like, that was really powerful to me. And then like, I come in and do the drum solo, like in Duende, just do the percussion solo. And it's like, well, what the hell was that? Like, what was, why? Um, that was cool, I guess. Like, that's really, it was just some, just some fast banging on stuff. But like, it could be really discouraging, um, you know, if people, if people don't feel what you're doing. Um, and a lot of that is, you know, make sure you're doing what you're passionate about. Um, do something that is like intrinsically valuable to you, um, because that's what I had to find with my percussion. I realized I thought that I was doing this because I wanted to look cool and fancy and people would be like, wow, that was amazing. Oh my God. And like, that's cool. Like, it feels nice. Like, oh, wow, I'm doing something cool. Yeah. But like, what I really do is I'm able to disconnect from the world and, you know, every, like all of the pressures and just play. And like, that's the best thing about, about, you know, doing something that you love. It's like, that's what you can do with it. It takes you away from all the stuff that is like pressuring and all the stuff that can, can be distracting and weigh, da weigh you down and you're just doing what you love it. And you can just get lost in that. That's important. Such words of wisdom. Do what you love and make sure you enjoy it before anybody else. You know, something I've always heard is if you don't believe in yourself and your work, then how can you expect anyone else to? Yeah. So that's that's very important. Thank you so much for taking the time today to really share your wisdom and your knowledge with us um, and for just inspiring young people and people in general every day. Um this has Likewise, been this was really fun. Yeah, I had a great it's, time. It's been Thanks amazing. for letting me spew all my nonsense for half an hour. Not nonsense. Fantastic <laughs> bits of thought food. Thought food. <laughs> thought food. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about where we can find you after this yeah, episode. So the, so the best place for me is Twitter. I am Shane Low one on Twitter. That's L-O-W-E. Um, I post some drum stuff up there. I post um, all kinds of different things about content that I'm creating, uh, different collaborations. Twitter is, is 100% the best place that you can find me. Um, you can also check out, you know, feel free to, to shoot me an email, you know, if you have any questions. I'm always happy to hear from you. My email is just shane at venom.fm. I'd love to, to talk with people and, and, you know, have conversations and, you know, if you're interested in collabing, always happy to work together and, and create some new stuff. So keep in touch. Thank you so much, everyone. This has been another episode of the Able Voices podcast. I'm honored to have been a guest host for today. Please stay tuned. And this concludes this episode. i
Rises is a production of the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education, led by me, Dr. Rhoda Bernard, the founding managing director. It is produced by Daniel Martinez Del Campo. The intro music is by Kai Levin, and our closing song is by Sebastian Batista. Kai and Sebastian are students in the arts education programs at the Berkeley Institute for Accessible Arts Education. If you would like to learn more about our work, you can find us online at berkeley.edu slash B-I-A-A-E, or email us at B-I-A-A-E at berkeley, that's L-E-E, dot E-D-U.